No, that was a lot of fun. I hadn't had that happen before. I mean, the whole yeah. Right. It's good. Do you mind introducing yourself? Uh, sure. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm John Hargrove, uh, player progression designer from Antigua. Great. Um, usually the next question is, so what's player progression? Yes. Come on, just, um, so we basically work on achievements and, and game rewards. So like when you finish a match, as you just did, yep. you get some amount of account experience um, and gold to unlock different things. So it's like, as you saw, you've uh, had a bunch of different creatures that you could summon. One of the new things you can unlock and mm -hmm. collect more of are the different kinds of creatures and you can choose which ones you bring in um, into the match with you a uh, bunch of stuff like that uh, obviously we're on uh, win 10 and, and xbox one so i'll be doing the achievements too and also so working on daily challenges when are you uh when you guys completely release do you have like a date or period not, or? not an official release uh -huh. i mean we're, we're still uh, shooting for 2015 ideally awesome. But uh, as of yesterday, we're officially closed beta on uh, Win 10 and Xbox One. Mm -hmm. And it's basically, you know, pending how that goes, you know, hopefully this year. <laughs> now, um, I guess, can you just quickly describe the game to me? Or, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. I can do this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, in a nutshell, uh, Gigantic is about five, hero five heroes battling another five heroes. Each team has a Gigantic guard <laughs> Guardian on their side um, in the match you, you just played. You were on the Gripen team fighting against the Naga team. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, once you jump into the match, you just go for killing the other team, which generates power for your guardian. And whoever's guardian uh, has a full power bar first, rampages across the battlefield, at which point your guardian knocks down the enemy team's guardian. And at that moment, the enemy team's guardian is vulnerable. And at that moment, you have 20 seconds in order to finish off um, a wound. And it's sort of like traditional uh, boss battle types where mm -hmm. there's three stages. Yep. So yeah, there's three wounds. So each of those are done as a whole. Um, there's other ways to generate power, too, to make your guardian rampage faster, like controlling points, actually. <laughs> Uh, does it as well, but mostly, mostly just controlling points and and heroes or ki killing heroes. Sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> so one of the things that I've really noticed about about the game is this really unique art style and design style. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it was uh, dictated by a bunch of artists that came on before I started, of course. But I uh, got. Uh, I, 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 Tremendous concept team with uh, Benad, Devin, and Jeff, our main three. Also, uh, Matt, mm -hmm. uh, who does a lot of our um, level design, who actually did a lot of work on Canyon. But it's basically just a vision from um, this great art team that had sort of become friends from previous companies mm -hmm. and um, just sort of came together to work on what really amounts to, I think, more of like a passion project than you know, a lot of us always have uh, the luck to work on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I can I can definitely see it in sort of the feel of the game and also the feel of yeah. your, your company as they like actually play and talk about the game with, with you know, members of the media as well as just any attendee who's here at PAX playing it. You like, can definitely see that enthusiasm and love for it, which is great. Yeah, yeah I know a lot of them. Actually, my, my sister is an artist on the team, too. She does character awesome. art and... I can tell a lot of them, you know, grew up with like Studio Ghibli movies and Disney movies. So when you see the art style, it definitely harkens back uh -huh. to I think some of like the classic great '90s uh, 2D animated things. Obviously, it's a 3D game, but you know, it still has a little bit of that old school 2D feel. Now, in terms of the gameplay, is there any? Were there any games that you guys harken towards or sort of? Um, oh, in terms of, yeah, yeah. Uh, inspiration for yeah. gameplay design? Right. Uh, sure, yeah, there's, um, it is a bit of an amalgamation slash melting pot game. Uh, you can see a lot of different aspects, like one of the ones uh, Finney talked about, uh, a bunch of us had previously worked at a company called ArenaNet on Guild Wars. One of the inspirations, uh, I'll talk about more in a moment, was... Um, uh, Guild versus Guild in Guild Wars 1. Yep. Uh, it was basically an 8v8, um, which was awesome, a lot of fun, but um, a lot of that was very like, complicated. Like, people had to build their own skill bars, and there was you had to get seven other friends together to form an eight-man team. There's a lot of a lot of time spent preparing to have fun. Whereas this game, you just pick a hero, get four other people. It's much more manageable. Um, so it's basically just like we took the essence of this thing we built in the past and sort of boiled it down to something a little bit more cohesive. Um, but that's just one aspect of it. Um, there's also a lot of uh, elements taken from the MOBA genre. So obviously we've all played 
bunch of league and Dota at this point, and we really like the leveling within a match experience, which is like way different than anything we've done in previous projects. So that idea of growing a character uh, through the course of gameplay was really interesting. Uh, but we didn't. So we like the idea of the growth throughout the game. We didn't like that most MOBAs start you off with zero skills, and you actually just turn the skills on as you go. Ours start with a full skill bar but um, any given skill has two branches, as you saw, and then another two branches after that. So there's seven unique uh, skills, uh, skill states for any given skill. The initial skill, the initial branch, and then the AB choice after that on, on either side. So there's a tremendous amount of depth in terms of like how you can build a hero from match to match, and like what your build might, uh, how your build might be different from somebody else's. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, Growing throughout the course of the match was definitely MOBA inspired. Some of the more core gameplay, I would say, is a little bit more like GVG from from Guild Wars. Um, there's other games too. So a lot of the heroes have more of a, a background in different um, different game styles, like Wu, uh, the frog martial artist. He's he sort of harkens back to fighting games. Mm -hmm. So he's all about the you know, uppercut, uh, uppercut uh, punches and diving kicks and swooping in. So it's really, I mean, it's not any one game, obviously, but we just take a lot of pieces um, from a lot of games we love. And that's why one of the things we ask people when they sit down is like, what's your, what's your background? Are you into shooters? Because we've got an array of characters for shooter characters. Are you more of like an MMO arena player? You know, did you do a lot of WoW arena? Then we have something you'd probably be more comfortable with. Um, and Wu is sort of like the true fighting game one. Uh, but that gives you an idea, in, in short. Or are you not comfortable shooting at all and you want to go melee? Just We try to have something for everybody's different uh, backgrounds. Right. Yeah, so I mean, in, my, in the gameplay I just played, first game, played a healing character. Yeah. Um, what was his name again? Oh, Uncle Sven. Uncle Sven, which is a very uh, ca cartoonish looking character. Yeah. Um, yep. But also like a lot of fun in terms of the dynamics between healing and also between like defense as well as offense. Yeah. Um, and so, it's, like, and very simple to easily like, pick up and play. It. So, yeah. I mean, it was just, I hadn't played it before. Yeah, yeah, I was impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, I, I'm used to people missing throwing his healing flask <laughs> when they're trying to hit, hit, uh, hit their allies, but you nailed like every single one I saw so that was that was pretty pro <laughs> <laughs> thanks thank you um, but no I, I also really love the pace of this game like it's definitely one that feels very simple to pick up and just play and it the rounds don't feel like it's a draining experience yeah. it feels like something you could shoot through and keep play like a quick game and come back for more so yeah yeah the, the target I think is like we're hoping for around 20 minutes a match mm -hmm. I mean some obviously can go yeah, you know, plus or minus five minutes, fifteen right. to twenty-five minutes, I think, is the range. But yep. you know, it's pretty tight on average. You could probably get three games of Gigantic in an hour. So I like that. You know, unlike a lot of the MOBA games, it can often go like forty-five minutes plus. You're yeah, guaranteed like to get a couple experiences game. in that time, and more likely to have one at least one of them. So yeah, I like yeah. that too. Oh. <laughs> I hate going going to bed on a loss. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess uh, another question for you in terms of if there was like one thing that you could. Um, you know, have uh, people playing your game come out from your game with like some ex experience or just you know something to take away from the game. What would that be? Ah, huh. that's a that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I guess I just think uh, I I would just hope they would have a, a sense of extra joy from having spent some time in the world. And like you said, it's 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 got a great art style and. I think that um, at least tends to cheer me up a little bit. So I guess I hope people just leave the game with a smile and makes the rest of the day a little bit better. Awesome. <laughs> uh, last question. Music and sound and audio in the game. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, we've got uh, two audio guys, uh, Mateo and Dan. Mm -hmm. um, I guess um, our, our goal right now is to get voices in for all the heroes. Uh, in here, you probably heard the, the Guardians talking a lot. Uh, we'll eventually be layering in more hero audio. Uh, there is hero audio here already, but yeah, we're doing another pass on that and everything. But uh, I guess I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, they're, they're doing everything from like soundtracks or like grand scores for mm -hmm. battle music versus general theme music to the Guardians talking and sort of ex explaining what they're doing, like when they're rampaging, when they need their, mm -hmm. their heroes to defend or, or push. And then the heroes will be commenting more on like the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. Like when you score a, a Highlander badge or go on a healing spree, like Uncle Sven would, would talk about those things a little bit more. And they talk about things they have affinities for. 
which, you know, again, probably a support character, he'd probably be a lot happier about any time he got an assist or when he's healed a certain amount per life and start to comment on that sort of thing. Versus a uh, killer character, like the guy you're sitting next to is playing Lord Nasus, the big Minotaur bruiser. He might be more about, like, the killing sprees and things yeah, like that. Yeah. Hopefully they, they comment cool. on Cool. Who, which one's your favorite character? Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've got, like, three answers. Okay. I guess over the last year, I'll just... If you really just want one, I think the Margrave has been my, my favorite overall. It kind of goes up and down with, like, gameplay uh, design tweaks because, you know, balance is ever-flowing, and sometimes someone gets a buff that surges them. But I really love uh, the Margrave because he's basically just, like, a big cult of the character. It really makes me feel like a monster when I play him. I mean, I mean you can see him. He's uh, almost the top-left guy over there. Uh, he's sort of got this, like, man in the iron mask feel to him, but if he had become some sort of like hulked out monster during that time too. Um, but he's got this tremendous leap skill that just feels like you're dunking on an enemy team and if you can initiate on three plus people, it's just one of the better team initiators. He's kind of like, he's almost like melee support. I mean, he can sometimes take over a game as a, as a killer, but sometimes it's more about just stunning the enemy team, keeping them together to, to make it so your team can initiate and deal damage. So, He's probably my favorite. I, I mean, I also really love uh, Charnock and uh, Lord Noss is actually the Minotaur. have been two of my, my other favorites. I kind of go back and forth between them, depending uh -huh. on what the hero comp needs. Yep. Like, you, you were almost going to queue up for another one. You are going to wait for see what the other heroes locked yeah. in first, so you knew how to compliment yeah. them. That's right. what I usually do. Uh, so I rotate smart between moves, ranged and melee. <laughs> but yeah, it's usually Charnock if my, my team needs ranged, or... I decide between either Lord Nasus or Margrave if they need some melee uh -huh. beef. In the rare occasion that uh, melee or beefy melee isn't needed, I also really like uh, Taito the Swift. He's more of a fast assassin character. He does this awesome spin that, that bleeds people, and he's more of like a closer, uh, but he's very, you know, he's got low hit points, so he's really got a fight or flight <laughs> a whole lot. Um, but I, I love him because he's, he's a closer whereas the others are more like the starting pitchers, to use a baseball analogy. Anyway. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. And yeah, no problem. Guiding me through the game as well, too. Yeah, it was a blast to watch you. It's always good when, you know, the person you help coach is performing really well, so <laughs> it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks again. No problem.